deepest, darkest catacombs of MMACrypt.com, your respectable MMA internet forum and MMA news site, the MMA Crypt Live Chat Hour. Listen up and find out what's inside the crypt. Hello and welcome to the MMA Crypt Live Chat Hour. I'm Rich Davy and it's Sunday, October 20th, 2013. The day after the UFC 166 Kane Velasquez vs. Junior Dos Santos 3 event. This was one of the best UFC events in quite a while, and from what many are saying, quite possibly the best UFC event ever. On today's show, we'll be talking about the UFC 166 event and whatever else arises during today's show. Joining me on the show today is MMA fighter Chris Bad Boy Tickle. Hey, what's up, Rich? Thanks for having me on. What's up, guys? Hey, man. Thanks for joining me, buddy. I truly appreciate it, bud. So. Okay. Uh, let me just give the people a little background here on how we decided to do the show. During the UFC 166 event, I usually check on Twitter to see what people are saying about the event, and I saw Chris tweeting some humorous comments during the fights, so I asked Chris if he wanted to join me on today's show. Chris was kind enough to be our first guest on the MMA Roundtable show that we do, and we did that interview with Chris back on April 7th, 2013. Uh, we had a great time doing that Roundtable show with Chris, and we wanted to get together again to you know chat a little MMA with him. So um, I'll put a link in the video for you guys to check out the interview we did back in April. Yeah, oh. definitely. Thanks for having me back, bud. Yeah, man. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and uh, jump right into things. Uh, what'd you think about the event, man? Man, sick card, man. For real, I give it to Joe Silva on that card. I think he did a great job, and uh, you know I I thought it was a very entertaining card. Um, you know, a lot a lot of talent. So I gotta say, a lot of talent. Yeah, it was real exciting right from the get-go, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I, I liked every fight. Okay, let's work our way uh, down, starting from the main event. Um, what I did was I looked up some of the uh, historical stats, and it seems like uh, quite a few um, records were made last night in the UFC in that event. Um, yeah, that's what I heard. Say it again? Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. All right, so first up. Cain Velasquez versus Junior Dos Santos for the heavyweight title. That one pretty much went the same way that their second fight did, except uh, JDS fell flat on his face and virtually TKO'd himself. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was hoping that it would have gone the distance because, you know, we have that little prediction contest that we do. And uh, I had predicted Cain by, uh, you know, decision because I really didn't see it going, you know, any other way other than it did last time. Um right. I actually thought it was more of a beatdown this time than the last time around, but what did you think? I, I agree on that one. I, I thought JDS took a lot more punishment in this fight than the last time, too. Yeah, and uh, I actually was hoping that he would do I like both guys, you know, so it's, it's kind of hard when you get two guys that you're fans of watching them go at each other because it's always going to be bittersweet because one of your favorite guys is going to lose. <laughs> yeah, I had JDS winning that fight. You know, that's why I wanted to win. Um, and Kane just manhandled him. You know, it was dominated. Uh, it was crazy. I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I mean, it was actually, I thought it was worse. I mean, I had a, a little back and forth with a couple of guys about it, but I actually thought it was worse because I think by the third round, uh, you know, Goldie and Joe Rogan were saying that uh, Kane had already landed almost 300 shots. Um, yeah, I heard him. DC almost broke a record or something like that for heavyweight? Yeah, man, he did. Yeah. Yeah, I have those stats here somewhere. Let me see. All right, that KO by Kane at 3.09 in the fifth round was the latest uh, KO ever in a UFC fight and the latest finish ever in a heavyweight bout. Huh. Um, Velasquez also made that nine wins by knockout in the UFC, which is the most knockouts by any fighter in heavyweight history. Did, didn't uh, Randy Couture get the, the latest stoppage ever in a title belt fight, fifth uh, round? Uh, yeah, what I'm going by here is I'm going by the fight metric stats here. Oh, gotcha. So I don't know if that was before fight metric took over or what. I believe it was. Yeah. I think back then there was, uh, what was the other? Rico Rodriguez beat him. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then, and then according to what fight metric is reporting, uh, they're saying that uh, those nine wins by KO ties him with Rich Franklin and Vitor Belfort. For the wow. third most wins by KO in UFC history. Wow. Um, the only other fighters who have more 
can't, uh, wins by KO, or Chuck Liddell with 10, and right. Anderson Silva with 11. Right. Um, and then here's that punch stat that we were talking about. Um, only two fighters in UFC history have landed more than 200 strike, uh, strikes in three separate bouts, and that would be GSP and now Cain Velasquez. Wow. Um, Cain Velasquez now has 1,257 total strikes landed, and that is the most in UFC heavyweight history. Yeah, he was staying busy the whole fight, you know. He And I would say 75%, 80% of the punches were nothing but power punches he was throwing the whole fight. Yeah, was, it, it looked like he was getting like 3 to 1, you know. Yeah, he, he was throwing down. Okay, last night uh, Velasquez landed 274 total strikes against Dos Santos, which is the fourth most landed in a single UFC fight. So those numbers kind of like backed me up, and what I was saying to one of the other guys on the crypt about uh, how I thought it was, you know, more of a beatdown than the other fight. So those numbers pretty much prove that. Oh yeah, you know, like, and Cain better thank JDS for that because. You know, JDS fought, if you watch the whole fight, with his hands down the whole time. You know yeah, I mean? and he was trying to do some of that uh, that Anderson Silva matrix shit up against the fence, which didn't work out too well for him. No, I don't know what the hell he's doing. You know, he, he's such a superior boxer, you know, and you keep your hands up and have head movement move like that with your hands up. It doesn't matter. You don't need to put your hands down. You know, maybe I think it's probably just a training flaw he has his whole life. I'm pretty sure he's got the same boxing trainer his whole career, and, uh, you know, it's just a habit he's got. And uh, in every fight, he does that. And, you know, look at his face. You know, he I remember it, before this fight, he said he looked in the mirror when he got home and he couldn't believe his face looked like this and it would never look like this before. Well, guess what? Keep your hands, okay? You exactly. Know? Yeah, I say that to guys, too. I say, you know, and they try to counter me with it by saying, well, it works for some guys like Anderson Silva. <laughs> yeah, it works for some guys like Anderson Silva unless they're fighting Chris Weedman. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. I mean, no. Um, I mean, this is stupid. He's he was a champion. He wants to be a champion. Well, guess what? You. I hope he gets back in. You know, I hope he listens to the show. Look, look how many punches he land on him. You know, mm -hmm. and it's not because he was moving so well. It's got his hands down the whole time. Yeah, I, yeah. I just don't get that. I guess you know you could you could tell that basically what he was hoping for was that one big shot because he just kept on winging that. You know. Yeah, I mean, look, first round, JDS popped him what three hooks, and he you know Kane was hurt. You know. Like, He's got that heart in that chin, and he kept on coming. Yeah. Yeah, well, he landed that one, like, within the first minute, and then I guess he figured, oh, geez, I almost had him. Let me keep on trying. Yeah, I don't know why he laid off. I couldn't believe it. You know, I think he's worried about the takedown. So what do you think? A lot of people seem to think that these two guys are just going to be in a cycle where they fight over and over again. I, you know, I don't really see anything from the last two fights that actually warrants them fighting again. I, I don't either. Um, you know, and, and that's the problem. You know, there's a lot of people on the, down the line coming up that deserve fights too, but, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, JDS goes and fights uh, uh, Fabricio, doom, you know, and, and stops him. Who, what's what's that for JDS? Yeah. You know what I mean? Is, is Cormier going to fight Kane? Um, you know, I'm, even though they're friends and training partners, guess what? You know, this is our job. And uh, I'll enter down a half a million dollar fight or a hundred thousand dollar fight. You know, I'm fighting my best friend and it doesn't matter. Oh, well, that's a career that he chose, and, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I know. I don't agree with that either. I mean, Jesus, that's the whole goal of being an MMA fighter, to become the champ. Exactly. You know, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's not going to just get, get up and move camp. I wouldn't. You know, they're friends no matter what, and they know it's his job. So, you know, what comes down to it, it's about getting that strat. Yeah, exactly. All right, so uh, the recap there. uh the champ, Cain Velasquez, defeats Junior Dos Santos by TKO due to strikes in round five at 3.09 to retain the heavyweight title. Any other comments on that one? Must watch heavyweight fight ever. Jesus, that's all I can say, man. That fight was sick. Yeah, and now even uh, DFW, Daniel Fucking White, um, he came out and said that, in his opinion, Cain Velasquez is the best heavyweight fighter in history ever. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with that. I mean, him and JDS, I would say both are. You know, they're both sick, well-rounded fighters, not one-dimensional. You know, and Kane showed that last night. Dude, Kane's boxing looked so sick. I thought it looked better than his second fight with JDS. He was, you know, the only thing I did not like about that whole fight was him laying against a cage on JDS. Yeah. There's a couple of times the ref should have broke him up, 
And, uh, you know, it's about better in position. Holding someone against a cage and peppering them is not better in position. But he was smart, and he would back off and throw two or three power shots and come back in again. Yeah. You know, he should make them tired, gas his arms out. But, you know, some other refs would have broke him up a little bit earlier. You know, I was hoping that would happen, but it didn't. And, uh, you know, the game plan worked. Yeah, it was almost like a game plan right out of Randy Couture's book, you know? Yep, just like the second round. You know, if, if you watch GDS Kane number two, he did the same thing. It was after the third round. After he was taking a beating the first two rounds in that fight. And then that second half, third, he started putting against the cage and, you know, started dominating the fight. Yeah, I, uh, like I said, you know, um, Kane is a big uh, favorite of mine because of uh, the way he destroyed Brock Lesnar. Oh, yeah. I've never been a fan of Brock Lesnar myself. Don't care for the guy. I think he's bad for MMA, and I'm so glad he's gone. Me too. I, 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 I hate that guy at all. I don't like him. <laughs> I'm glad somebody backs me up on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Come on, man. I was in WWE. I'm not scared. I always want to fight. Man, he's been fighting a long time ago, fool. Come yeah, on. And, and he was just an embarrassment when he would speak in the cage. I mean, when that, that one fight where he... I think it was where he beat Frank Mir, where I'm going to go home and I'm going to do my wife. And it's like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> fuck, fuck Miller Light, Coors Light. <laughs> yeah. what a, what a, I don't know. I'm not a fan of the guy. I'm so glad he's gone. Oh, yeah. Dana White ruined his answer to that. Uh, that was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, uh, next up, Daniel Cormier versus Roy Nelson. What did you think of that one? Uh, pretty slow fight the first round. Um I don't know what Daniel was doing. I think he was trying to sit up sit up his shots, you know. Obviously, he took him down, got really tired. Second, third round, Daniel started opening up, man. He looked fantastic. You know, for for a guy, four years of training, you know, a high-caliber wrestler, his hands looked a lot better than a lot of people in the UFC. I would say 75% of people in the UFC. You know, he started doing a lot of kick combinations, punch combinations, and, you know, the last two rounds, he looked very good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't really a, overall a, a really impressive fight, but uh, he certainly looked much better than he did in the fight against Frank Mir, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, but that, that's, I think that fight with Roy Nelson is a bread-and-butter fight for Cormier. DC knew he wasn't going to get taken down, and Roy had to worry about the takedown the whole time. You know, the only weapon Roy has is a right hook, overhand right, you know, so Daniel was smart, he was circling away from it, and, you know, when he's come back the other way, he was catching with overhand rights, you know, and... Daniel was popping the jab, make him back up, and then, you know, throw an overhand right, you know, go for a double. So, you know, for Roy, it was a bad fight for him. You know, and I, I didn't see him having a chance at all winning that fight. And overall, you know, DC did good. You know, you, you know, you got Roy tired, he was scared to take down, and he started opening up. Yeah, I don't think many people were, were giving Roy a chance in that one. No, no, not at all. Man, you know, shit. I mean, I don't think Roy even gave himself a chance. Yeah, I wonder what's going to happen to him now, because that's like, what, two or three in a row for him that he's lost? Or... Yeah, but, you know, he just got that new contract for this fight, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I kept reading something about that. Eight fights, right? Yeah, it was something stupid. And, and you know, Roy, I, I've never met the guy, but, you know, I heard he's a real, real asshole. And Dana White always complains about dealing with him, you know. And Dana White usually doesn't complain about dealing with other fighters, but Roy's probably top of his list, him and Diaz. You know, yeah, they, don't, they don't like each other, but I think that goes back to when uh, he kept telling Roy, come on, man, get yourself in shape, you know, make yourself look like a professional fighter, get rid of the keg that you got going on there, you know. Yeah, but that fat bastard was quick as hell, though, I'll tell you that, man, he can take a beat. You know, and that's one thing, you always push the side of the fights, you know. It's, you know, I've always, I've heard Dana, too, also say, you know, you know actually speaking of this, the last Ultimate Fighter fight, I watched that kid who was just a wrestler. You know, Dana made a comment, you know, one-dimensional fighter, you know. Well, Roy's a one-dimensional fighter pretty much, too. He's going to walk around, take a beat, take a beat, and wait till he lands overhand right. You know, that's pretty much his game plan. Yeah, whatever happened to his whatever happened to his ground game, he pretty much abandoned that altogether, you know, and it seems like all he goes for now is a big shot, and that's it. Shit, I would be, too, making $60,000 a knockout. What do you, you know what I'm saying? He knows he knocked people out, and he's got a chin, shit. What do you want to do? Take someone down, win a fight, win 40, 50K, or win a fight by knockout, win 110K, you know? Yeah, yeah I guess he doesn't have to worry now, because like we said, he, he signed that new contract, so he's pretty much good as gold. Yeah, and what is, I think out of all of his fights, he's got four or five of them knockout of the night, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Jesus, man. I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I think he's fine. I don't think he's going anywhere, you know. He's probably going to get a powder puff fight, his next one, probably with Sean Jordan or somebody garbage. And then, uh, 
you know, I think he'll be back. Okay, recapping that one there, Daniel Cormier defeats Roy Nelson by unanimous decision, 30-27, by all three judges' scores. Okay, next up, Gilbert Melendez versus Diego Sanchez. Not only was that the fight of the night, but most likely the fight of the year. Yeah. What, what did you think of that one? Holy shit. I thought about that. My God, <laughs> that was probably the sickest damn fight and heart beating I ever seen in my damn life. Yeah, you know? and, and a lot of people were giving Diego shit saying he had no right even fighting Gilbert Melendez, and I don't know why people hate that guy so much. You know, I like Diego Sanchez. He seems like a really, you know, nice kind of guy, man, but people just do not like him. Well, I mean, it's, it's up and down. Diego, Diego's always up and down, man. He might lose to... A guy who's not the top tier, really come back and whoop a top tier guy's ass. You know, Diego is up and down. Um, you know, I, I really, I really didn't agree with that fight either. But Diego's always asking for big fights. You know, and Diego's, you know, how many fights he got in the UFC? Diego's got a shitload. Yeah, well, he's like one of the original Ultimate Fighter guys. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's he's the first season. Yeah, I mean, but you know, Diego's style and Gilbert's style matched up perfectly, and Joe Silva knew it, and. uh Put on one of the best fights in the freaking in the history of UFC. Yeah, even made the uh, John Jones Gustafson fight look kind of tame. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely agree. You know, it, it was it was cool about Diego. Man, he, he's a nutbag. You know, I was looking on Twitter, man. He he is a complete nutbag. Like, I, I did you ever watch the UFC awards like a year and a half ago, two years ago? Uh, no, I had I didn't see it. He won fight of the year. I think it was Clay Guida fight, and. uh I think he was drunk as shit. He gets on the stage, and he's like, uh, Diego Sanchez wants to thank all my fans. Like, he was just, like, going on and on. He's like, <laughs> and, like, somebody had to walk on the stage and get him to stop talking. Like, he was so wasted. Like, he's fucking crazy. Like, I don't know. All I got to say is, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Fucking do a cartwheel, man. Shit. Jesus. Yeah, but what a fight, man. They, they don't make them much more exciting than that, man. That was just incredible. Yeah, Diego, Diego was a one-style fighter, man. You know, he'll go straight forward, get close, and then try to get a hold of you, take you down. If he can't take you down, he's winging 100% punches and coming in straight at you. You know, and the first round, you know, he was moving around, making a little bit more angles. Second, third round, he was just walking straight into fucking Diego's right hand or, or Melinda's right hand. Yeah. Dude, I swear to God, Melinda's was just popping him with straight rights. <laughs> yeah, he he, sh he shocked me a couple of times because he really hurt Gilbert Melinda's a couple of times there. And then, uh, what was it, the third round when he hit him with that uppercut and dropped him? Oh, my God, dude. I was like, that would have been the sickest comeback in history, I think, for taking a beating. You know, next to Tim Bo's just comeback. Yeah, and I actually even thought he was going to, uh, I, I thought he was going to actually uh, get the rear naked choke when he took his back after he dropped him. Yeah, you know what? I can't believe he jumped. I think he was tired. He was just trying to help him finish it. He should have let him back up because Melendez is like, he, he couldn't even stand straight when he got back up. Yeah. You know, that was, uh, that was crazy shit, man. Yeah, that yeah. gas. How about that gas? Jesus. Oh, yeah, I was going to say something about that, too. That was nasty as hell, wasn't it? I, I thought they were going to stop it, you know, in the second, third round. It's definitely third because Melendez, if you look at Melendez, he, he started throwing straight rights. Melendez always throws an overhand hook right. And Melinda was just throwing straight, not even 100% punches, but he's kept on aiming for that gas to open up more and more. And he did, man. I think it was, what, like four or five inches long? Yeah, man, that was pretty nasty. It was like almost over the entire eyebrow. <laughs> yeah, it was nasty. Oh, my God. Okay, so let's recap that one there. Gilbert Melendez defeats Diego Sanchez via unanimous decision, 29-28, 30-27, and 29-28. 30-27? Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I get the last round of Diego when he dropped him. Yeah, me too. Did you, did you give him the third round too? Yeah, I gave him the third round as well because I had a 29-28. Well, Melendez definitely whooped his ass the second round. The first round was up in the air. Yeah. But I don't see how 30-27 uh, in favor of Melendez goes. But we see that a lot in uh, on scorecards lately with the judges. Yeah, where the, I don't know where the hell they get these judges at, man. I, I don't get it. Yeah. Put them, in, put them in school, and bam, you know, they're the best judges in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. They've got to have some sort of a, you know, a level playing field with these guys. Where they're, all, they're all on the same page because, you know, everyone's got so much freedom to interpret, you know, the scoring and things like that. It's like, you know, 
you know, get everyone on the same page, you know, have some sort of schooling, some education where, you know, they all go, you know, to the same place, they get some sort of certification, they come out and, you know, you can see some sort of consistency in the way that the fights are scored. Well, I know, like, Big John, he does uh, the, the, the testing in, like, classes for uh, referees, you know. You know, it'd be a lot better if all the judges were, like, you know, ex-fighters. But I, you know, I think there's probably a clause in that. The reason why is because maybe they don't like someone's camp or like another yeah. fighter. You know, they might be disgruntled against them. But, you know, I don't know, man. That judge, some of the judging they've been doing the past six months is fucking horrendous. Yeah, I agree. You know, and Dana White, you know, he always says, you know, don't leave it in the hand of the judges, you know. But guess what? Just look at Gilbert Melendez and Sanchez. Diego, you, you can hit the motherfuckers with a garbage can, a cinder block. You know, they get back up and keep going. Yeah. You know, how the fuck you finish people like that? Exactly. Yeah, I saw a couple of fights last night where there were a couple of question of questionable scores, like that 30-27. Uh, you know, I, I don't see how they're going to score 30-27 for Gilbert Melendez. Um, yeah, I agree with that, bud. Okay, next up, Gabriel Gonzaga versus Sean Jordan. That one didn't last very long. No, not at all. I, I, I think... Is, is, is Gonzaga on TRT? Yeah, he, he was off. Yeah, he got. I thought he was off the TRT. Well, I know in Brazil, they don't have a sanction on it. And, you know, that's why Vitor, he takes it while he's there in, there in training camp because they can't say anything about it. As long as his levels are good before he comes back. I'm telling you, Gabriel's last two fights, he finished them. And he looks a hell of a lot faster than he has in the last four years. Yeah. You know, I, I'm pretty sure he made a comment that he was taking it too. I thought. Yeah, I thought I read a comment about that. Um, yeah, I, I, now that you mention it, yeah, I, I do recall reading something about that. Yeah, I mean, he's on a fucking rampage, man. He was in the slums what two years ago. You and yeah, he was in the yeah. slums. Yeah, a couple of years ago, everyone was saying that maybe it's time for him to go elsewhere. That's what I thought. I thought he was gonna retire or fucking quit. You know, now he's coming back, just dropping fools like it's a sack of potatoes. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of records, he was another one of the fellows that made a, a record stat last night. Really? Yeah, he now has 11 UFC finishes, and this ties him with Frank Mir for the most in heavyweight history. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. In all 11 of his UFC victories, Gonzaga has defeated his opponents either by knockout or submission. Huh. Wow. I didn't even, that didn't even cross my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like I said, when I read the fight metric stats on some of the uh, historical setting uh, records that were made last night, I was pretty shocked there were so many. Yeah, I think uh, on the fight matrix uh, list, it should be under Chris Tickle made the funniest tweets in a matter of five minutes. <laughs> it, should, it should be on there. Double check that, buddy. Yeah, man, you had me going last night. I was laughing as I was reading your tweets. <laughs> Okay, so wrapping that one up, Gabriel Gonzaga defeats Sean Jordan via TKO by punches in round one at 133. And then next up, John Dodson versus Daryl Montague. Uh, that little fellow's badass, that John Dodson, isn't he? Dude, John, my boy, man. I tell you what, you know, when he walked into that show, you know, I remember watching John fight on tap out, you know, way before he even got in the UFC. And I was like, man, this kid's got so much talent. He's so athletic, and he's got hell of a fight power for a person 125 pounds. Yeah. You know, he was he was fighting at 145, 135, and he was still knocking people out. You know, that dude, his box is so sick. You know, the, the Greg Jackson, I, I seriously think John Dawson next to Jones is probably the best fighter in that whole camp. Yeah, I like, I like that guy. I, he, he seems to be, like, really a friendly sort of fella, but I think a lot of people have issue with him because wasn't he the guy on Tough where um, they gave him some shit because they thought he was giving up the fights that were going yeah. on? Yeah. You know, but overall, who cares? You find somebody who gives a crap. It doesn't matter what you know what they do or not. Yep. You know, you, you got to figure out how to stop whatever they're bringing. You know, and John Dawson said on the show, you know, who cares? A fight's a fight. If I tell you your favorite moves are darts, well, guess what? If you're putting a darts, you know how to get out of it. You know, if you know how to get out of a darts, don't worry about it. Yep. You know, yeah, you know that, was, that was vicious. I mean, he went in there, boom, he hurt the guy. Looked, several times he hurt him. And from what I understand, I'm not real familiar with that guy, Daryl, but from what I understand, that guy can take quite a shot. Yeah, dude, that dude 
took hell of five punches. You know, and, and, and the best part about that, you know, it shows that Journeyman and John, he laid off of him. And when he heard him, you know, he's not going to gas out. You look at the fight we did with uh, Demetrius Johnson. They banged for five rounds. He never got tired near, near one of them. Yeah. So he knew he wouldn't guess. He was being smart because that guy could punch hard. That dude was a big 125-er. Yeah. I've never seen that kid fight before, but John was smart and, you know, weighed his chance and he finished the fight. Yeah, so he, that was a he, – he got a win, he got a win last night, and the fight before that he had lost, right? Who, who's that? John. John, yeah, he lost. His last only fight he lost in the UFC would be to uh, Demetrius Johnson. Right. For the belt, which I think he got robbed. I, I thought he beat Demetrius ass. I was at them fights in Chicago, and uh, I, I thought he won. Yeah, I can't recall. I mean, once the fights are over for me, I usually forget them. <laughs> you should watch that fight. That fight was great, and uh, – I, I had Demetrius three to two on that. Okay, so wrapping that one up, John Dodson defeats Daryl Montague by knockout due to punches in round one at four fifteen. Okay, next up, Tim Bosch versus C B Dalloway. What'd you good think fight. of that one? Dude, it was a good fight. You know, it started off slow and then, you know, I'll tell you what, C B Dalloway's stand up improved hella. His boxing looked really, really good. I was impressed with them. Yeah, I have to be honest. I actually didn't miss that one because that was uh, when I was having that little laughing session at your tweets on Twitter there. So <laughs> <laughs> it I didn't, did, I didn't did see you, the whole thing. Did you see the weigh-in interview, like when they went to break and they showed the weigh-in with T.B. Delaware and Jim Bowes? No, I didn't see it. What happened? Do you, he seriously looked like one of the extras off Breaking Bad. Oh, like, yeah, that's what you were saying. Like, his, teeth, his teeth were all moving. Like he was up for like four days on meth or something. Yeah, that's what you were saying. Seriously. That got me going, man. True story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I, yeah, right. that fight was really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some people were uh, making comments that they thought that C.B. Dalloway should have won that one, but uh, those two consecutive eye pokes cost him a point in the third. I don't yeah. know if that was the reason that he lost the fight or not, but... I don't know, man. I had C.B. winning first and second, man. I, I, I don't know what happened. I, I, I was like... On Twitter a lot, you know, the third round really didn't pay attention, but, you know, Bosch got in his face at the end of the second, I remember, and started sticking him. So, I mean, I, I don't know what happened. I remember beginning of the third, he got poked right in the eye, right? The first time, right? He came in for a kick in Bay, pushed out, you know, get his range, he poked him right in the eye. I saw that. I was the last one. Was pretty that was nasty. Did you see it? It looked like the fingernail actually cut uh, Tim's eye, uh, you know, the inside of his eye by the bridge of his nose there. Yeah, dude, I... There's some nasty stuff, man. Taking a finger poke is can mess you up pretty good. Yeah, and then he got hit with a, it was like, what, 30 seconds to a minute later, he got hit again with a, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that did nothing but piss off Tim because uh, he won that third round, I thought. Dude, Tim, if you watch Tim's fights, he goes to later rounds. Tim is an animal in the third round. He's always, he always comes on stronger. I don't know if it's what it is, man, but he just starts breaking people in the third round. Like, Yushin Okami, man, that, that shit was crazy. Yeah. That, dude, that dude's a tough dude. Yep. And then last night in that fight, there was another sort of record there. C.B. Dalloway lost a decision for the first time in his 18-fight career. No shit. Yep. Huh. And his MMA record is 13-6, and six, and he's 7-5 and five in the UFC. And he's going to happen to him? He's going to get cut? Um, I'm going to say more than likely. Hmm. I mean, it was a pretty entertaining fight. If it, if if Melendez and Sanchez didn't have that fight, they would have probably had a fight tonight. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, they keep on talking about the 100 fighters that they need to cut, and it's, you know, we thought it was going to come in, you know, series of tens, but it seems yeah. to be coming in, like, dribs and drabs with three or four guys, you know, every other event. And they're picking up four or five guys after they cut three or four, too. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah, I was actually talking to one of the guys about that, and, you know, like they let Yushin Okami go, but he was making like 42000 46000 a fight. And then, right. And then they picked up three more guys, so I guess that 42000 a fight times three a year, you know, they picked up three guys that they could pay less than that to fight the entire year. Right, but see, you know, we don't get to see their contracts. You know, like my contract, you know, you get a three-fight deal, okay. It doesn't say you, you fight three times in one year, you fight three times by this month. You know, it's a three-fight contract. You know, they can shelf you. But, you know, some of these higher fighters like Okami, I'm pretty sure in his contract he had a probably a minimum of two or three fights in one year. He, you know, it's probably mandatory if he wasn't hurt. Yeah. You know, and, you know, 
You can pick up these new guys, like the new guy who fought Dotson last night, he probably made, you know, twelve thousand dollars. You know, while Dotson probably made thirty six thousand dollars. Right. You know, we don't need to see their contracts, we don't know what's in their contracts. You know, just like Roy Nelson. Big difference. You know, his regular contract was different from what he had now. Because I believe the contract that he was under before he switched was still from the Ultimate Fighter, which is like six fights, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so he wanted a different contract to negotiate, negotiate, you know, and, you know, who knows what's in their contracts, you know? Exactly. And uh, in the World Series of Fighting picked up Yushin Okami just last week. They, they, they're, they're getting some stacked fighters. Yeah, I mean, they're becoming like uh, what the WEC was at one point because they've got all the guys from the UFC that, you know. Right. And, and even Bellator is becoming like that as well. I mean, they said that wasn't going to be their model, but they sure as hell changed their mind about that. Now they've got all kinds of uh, UFC fighters in there. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you? You know, why why would you not pick up a quality fighter? Would you just want to pick up names to build or something, build a brand? I mean, you already have a brand. Yeah. You know, it's, your brand's to be throwing the best fights and the best fighters in the world. You know, that's why we get to the UFC, you know, it's the top fighting in the world. Exactly. So what do you think about that, uh, well, I know we're going off topic here, but what do you think about that uh, pay-per-view event coming up at Bellator, that 106 event? I ain't watching that shit. <laughs> I ain't paying a dime for that. Are you kidding me? I don't want to see Tito to fucking fight. Exactly. You know, does Tito need money for child support? <laughs> yeah, but it seems like now they're pulling out all the stops. I mean, they're throwing everybody. I think they're up to 15 fights on that card now. <laughs> Really? It was a five-hour pay-per-view? Yeah, right. Well, I guess it wasn't selling, because I, I heard rumors early on that they hadn't even sold 10,000 pay-per-views, so... No, I, I wouldn't. I mean, come on, that's the lamest shit I've ever seen in my life. I mean, what are they charging for that, anyway? I have no idea, but, you know, everybody you know that I've spoken to tells me that they wouldn't pay for it. They'll watch it, but they won't pay for it. Exactly. I wouldn't pay for it, either. Yeah, so but, I guess what they're doing is they keep on adding more and more fighters to the card. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, half Sorry. the fighters on that card are ex UFC fighters now. <laughs> I wonder how much it costs for them to get pay per view too. You know, it's not cheap. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people, are like, oh, you know, UFC is making millions and millions on pay per view. They are and they're not. You know, right. like, well, look at this Bellator. Let's say, let's say they, they pay for the new pay per view show. You know, let's we'll say it's probably like what three million dollars, four million dollars, maybe five. Mm -hmm. What happens, like Beltor, they pay three or four or five million dollars and 10,000 people bought it. Yeah, exactly. They're fucking bust. They do that twice in a row, they're toasted. Well, yeah, this is going to make them or break them. That's why I think they keep on adding, because initially, you know, they were hyping the fight on, you know, Tito and Rampage, and that didn't do anything. And then they, you know, got Al Alvarez to sign back with them, and then they added that to the card, and then they got King Mo on there, and, you know, and yeah. then they keep on adding fighter after fighter after fighter. And it seems to me like a desperation move because they're not selling anything, so they're putting on every possible name fighter that they have to try to sell this thing. Yeah, you know, speaking of fighters of the UFC, I, I wish King Mo went to the UFC. You know, King Mo's a hell of a fighter. They got, I know, you know, I was hoping he'd come over. Yeah. Okay, any other comments about that one? No. Nope. Okay, and let's go on to Hector Lombard versus Nate Marquardt. Uh, Damn. Yeah, that's a shame for Nate, the great man, because he has not been looking so great as of late. Nope. And, you know, that was, I think that's another bad matchup for him, too. You know, I, I don't think Nate has a chin at all. I and, guess. Also, and also, if you look at his physique now, since he uh, you know got busted for the TRT or the Royce, whatever it was they got busted for, yeah. I mean, his whole body has changed now, and he just has not been doing well since he um, got popped for that. Right, you know, but, you know, he, he's still a freaking huge 170. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a massive 170, you know, and he's still quick and everything, but he's he's got a, he's like Glass Joe, man, off Mike Tyson's punch out, man, and he can't take a fucking punch. Yeah, yeah. You know, he fucking, that was embarrassing watching him. He barely got tagged on that overhand right. He turned and ran away, and Hector hit him with a left uppercut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why you don't turn? You never ever turn and run away from somebody ever when they're fighting you. That was ridiculous. Yeah, especially not Hector Lombard. No hell no. And dude, speaking of Hector, dude, he looked he looked great. I thought I thought he looked phenomenal at one seventy. Yeah, I, you know he looked really. He almost looked like a different man to me because when they were showing yeah. his face, his face was so thin. Yeah, he looked totally different. But he lost. You could tell he lost some muscle mass. He was not as wide as he was before. Mm-hmm. 
but shit, not even punch is so damn hard. You know, muscle doesn't make you punch hard. People are like, oh, you know, let me go lift some weights. It's going to make me hit so much harder. Hell no. You know, you're born with that, and it's technical. And, you know, Hector has both. Yeah. Yeah, he was actually saying, uh, you know, he wasn't happy that he was forced because prior to the fight, he was complaining that they forced him to move to 170. And then after the fight, he's, he's praising him, saying, boy, I'm glad they moved me to 170. <laughs> I, I, I said it I said it two years ago, why do you move down to 170? You know, he's, he's not that tall. What is he, like 5'8"? Yeah, yeah, he yeah he's just too short for the you know heavier weight division. Definitely, you know, just like DC, you know, why does DC drop to two hundred five? Exactly. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like after that rough start that Lombard was off to, it looks like he's back on track now because uh, a lot of people were doubting him, myself included. I kind of was giving him a little shit there for that dreadful hey. start that he had. You better say sorry to him on here. You better yeah. tell him sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Hector, man. I'm sorry I doubted you. Apology accepted. <laughs> <laughs> He's a beast, man. That dude's a freaking scary monster, man. Guy, was he? Was he a black boner? I forgot. Is he under uh, Gracie or was he? Uh, I forgot who he's under. He's sick. That yeah, dude's yeah. nasty. Okay, so there was a record there, I believe, also with Hector Lombard last night. Knockouts under a minute, two minutes. Uh, let's see. That was Hector Lombard has finished his opponents either by knockout or submission in 26 of his 33 career victories. Wow. I wonder how many that's in the first round. Yeah. No no, no word on that. Damn. But, yeah, his uh, MMA career is 33-4-1 and one and 2-2 two and two in the UFC. Huh. So, yeah, it looks like that move down um, is going to – save him because they were actually I think they were actually on the verge of cutting him if he would have lost you know I mean, if he would have gone one and three they yeah might, they might have cut him yeah definitely agree on that one it was scary it was iffy on him I think that's why he also I don't think he really got forced to go to 170 I I, I seriously think that he knew that if he lost again at 85 which is has a higher chance that he's gonna get cut and I think it was a smart move on his part yeah, exactly. And if he would have moved, and when he moved down, if he would have lost, he might have been cut some slack if that was the case. Oh, true that. Okay, so recapping that one there, Hector Lombard defeats Nate Marquardt via KO due to punches in round one at 148. Okay, and then probably the most controversial decision of the night was the next fight, Jessica I versus Sarah Kaufman. That was yeah. a split decision win for I. I actually had that one. Uh, I scored round one and one, round three for Kaufman, so I actually thought she had won that fight. What, what did you think? I had the same as you, but I had one in three, four, or two. I don't know. I don't know what what the judge were thinking on that one. You know, Jessica I was moving backwards the whole time. Kaufman was controlling, hitting her with power shots, and I, I don't get it. Only thing I could think of that whole fight was. How long did it take for this guy to get her hair freaking cornrowed? Yeah, and as I was watching, I was thinking the same damn thing. I was going, Jesus Christ, that must fucking hurt. <laughs> <laughs> right? That'd be shit, man. Damn. That's got to hurt more than getting punched in the face because those cornrows were so tight, man. That looked like, oh, man. Right? No I shit. had a headache just looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> damn. All right, so another record there in that fight. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. What, fucking most controversial freaking wins ever? Uh, no, Kaufman was defeated by decision for the first time in her 19-fight career. Shit, I believe it. That girl punches hard as shit, man. Yep. Well, it was a close fight. I mean, you know, I guess realistically it could have gone either way, you know, depending. But, you know, the, the thing that I didn't like was actually Fight Metric didn't really come out with any stats last night on the fights. And it seems like Fight Metric. I don't know if they're hurting for help over there or what, but it used to be they used to you know report on the top three fights on the card and give all the numbers. But right. hey, there was nothing there last night. Huh. Well, yeah, it's, that's that's odd. Yeah. Oh, CompuStrike was the other company I was thinking of earlier. Yeah, and they usually post that up too. Yeah, and I didn't see anything last night. I thought that was kind of odd because I was actually looking for the numbers on the the main event. Hmm. That is messed up. Okay, and another uh, little historical bit of information there. <laughs> Jessica I and Sarah Kaufman had a combined number of significant strikes 
And their three-round bout for a total of 152 strikes, which is the UFC women's bantamweight record. Yeah, they were punching the shit out of each other. Yeah, they were going at it. Yeah, definitely. You know, and just guy, you know, she's a tough girl. But, you know, her downfalls, you know, she wasn't angling when she was backing up. She was backing up with her head straight up in the air, you know. And, you know, that's why Kaufman was coming in the straight right and was hitting her every time, you know. Like, that girl was tough and... I, I, I thought that they that Rogan said something about the percentages leading into the third, and Kaufman was like 64%, I thought. Yeah. That was something stupid. Yeah, I, you know, I, I had, I've seen a couple of guys make comments about Sarah Kaufman, and I kind of feel a little bit the same about her. You know, she gets touted so highly, but um, I don't know, man. She, it doesn't seem like she lives up to the hype that's, you know, built around her, you know? No, I, I, she's getting older. And uh, she's actually been in a lot of lot of brawls, you know. That's what that's how her style is, you know. It's probably taking its toll, man. She's slowing down a little bit, you know. She was a lot faster a couple years ago, yeah. To now, you know, but she still has that punch, and you know that chin, you know, and that and carries and fights, you know. If yeah, you get tired, you know, you take a beating. Yeah, and it kind of looks the same. We're seeing the same thing. On have you watched any of the tough this year? Um, just a little bit. Yeah, the women fighters on there, some great fights, but. All of the women that you would have suspected to be winning and coming out on top in the fights, all the you know the older you know veterans of MMA, female veterans, they're all losing, and yeah. it's all the young and up and coming talent that's beating the you know more established women MMA fighters in the show. It is, man. You know, you know, a lot of people, the older veterans, you know, you know, look at myself. I, I didn't start training until I was twenty-five. You know, a lot of these. Younger kids are starting training, you know, at 10 years old, 8 years old, 12 years old, you know, and they have a big jump on it, you know, and MMA is evolving. You know, it's not one discipline or more or two disciplines, you know, it's all disciplines, you know, and they're becoming well-rounded fighters. It's not, you know, and the people who are one-dimensional, they're going to lose. Yeah, and uh, who was who was the uh, Jessica Pena? Uh, is that her name, Jessica or? This guy? Uh, Pena. Oh, uh, Pena, yes, Pena. What, what is her name? You talking about Jessica Pena? Is that her name, Jessica Pena? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, she, uh, man, I, nobody gave her much um, promise in the show there, and she wound up beating the favorite. Yeah, she's freaking bad, man. That girl's good. Yeah. Quite a bit of heart on her, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely. I wonder if she's going to win the show because she seems to be everyone's darling now. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I think so. She hits hard. Oh, you remember last time we had our tough chat there when we were talking about uh, it was uh, Kelvin Gastelum and we were talking about Uriah Hall? Yeah. Um, Dirty Dale, he's looking for his cupcake. He said you never sent it to him over there in the U.K. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> My God. I do I do own a cupcake. <laughs> I, was hoping I, he would, I was hoping he would join us on the show so we could bring that up. I, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, but you and I were both wrong. Right, yeah, no shit. Yeah, because I was yeah. with you on that. I mean, I had Kelvin as the second, you know, uh, favorite on the show, and I, I truly thought that Uriah Hall was going to win, but, man, hey, he, just, he freezes up, man. He did the same thing JDS did. Yep. He gets the cage. That's why he lost that fight. He was winning the fight. I don't know if he was just scared or what. He, that was ridiculous, man. Yeah. Well, he better win his next fight because I think there's talk about him getting cut if he doesn't win the next one. Yeah, I think he'll get cut if he loses too. Because that'll be what three in a row for him, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, I was actually hoping to see that Josh Salmon Uriah Hall fight. I'm hoping that they match those two guys up. Huh? That's Josh was the other guy who was supposed to be the favorite on the show, and Kelvin right. beat him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He took him down and dominated him. Yeah. Huh? Okay, so recapping uh, that. Fight we were talking about there with Jessica I and Sarah Kaufman. Jessica I defeats Sarah Kaufman via split decision, 29-28, 28-29, and 29-28. Okay, and let's talk about one more here before we wrap things up. Uh, KJ News versus George Sotaropoulos. Not a real exciting fight, but uh, <clears throat> another record of sorts in that one. It was uh, KJ News' first win in the UFC and probably George Sotaropoulos' last fight. Yeah, I, I think so too. Like George, I think George can make 145. I don't, I don't see why he doesn't try to drop down weight. Um, 
I'm not sure. How old is George? He's, he's in his 30s. I know that for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure how old he is, but that's four in a row that he's lost, no? Yeah. And, I mean, but four in a row against tough motherfuckers. Yeah. You know, you know, George, I don't know, man. The first round, he was moving too much. He wasn't throwing anything. The end of the second, he started teeing off. He started catching KJ, you know, but... I don't know. I don't see much promise for both of them guys in the UFC at all. I know I was scored one round for him. I don't remember if it was the first or the second round for George, I'll, but I had I'll, it even going into the third. I would say the second round, George George won. Yeah. I think KJ pretty much destroyed him. You know, he was hitting him a lot in the body. You know, he was throwing a lot of punches. You know, and, and I don't know. He was ducking his head. George started throwing more head kicks. He started sending him up. He was just, I don't know what he was doing. Yeah, and that was that was another fight where there was a judge who gave all three rounds to KJ News when, you know, both you and I think that clearly George won the second round. Yeah, I, I think so too. Okay, so now what we're looking at here is George Sotopoulos has lost four straight UFC fights now. After starting his career in the promotion with seven straight victories, his yeah. MMA record now is fourteen and six and seven and four in the UFC, so Yeah. Kind of a shame to see that, but you know. Maybe, maybe, maybe he'll pull Hector Longbar and drop down the weight. We'll see. Well, I hope he does. I, I, always, I said that shit four years ago, three and a half, four years ago. Why doesn't George drop down the weight? He's got love handles going over his damn shorts. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a long motherfucker too. I mean, he's he's not a he's, he's a decent sized fifty fiber man. You know, he's lanky as hell. And I think if he dropped down to forty five, on a diet, stop eating cheeseburgers and pizza and drinking beer and shit, he probably. Have a great career for the next couple of years at 145. Yep. Okay, so recapping that one, KJ News defeats George Sotopoulos via unanimous decision, 29-28, 29-28, and 30-27. Okay, let's just uh, talk about the of-the-night bonuses. Uh, fight of the night, Gilbert Melendez versus Diego Sanchez. Definitely a well-deserved bonus, and probably not only fight of the night, but probably fight of the year as well. I agree. I thought I thought I thought Dan's gonna give him hundred thousand dollars each for that shit. Yeah, they got sixty grand each for that. Yeah, I mean, you know, back in the day, fights like that, you know, Dan would throw him a hundred thousand dollars each. You know, they beat the shit out of each other. Them guys ain't fighting for at least six, seven months. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Because sometimes he would actually double up the bonus. He would, correct. Okay, and knockout of the night goes to our friend uh, John Dodson. Uh, he won by that nasty KO at four thirteen in round one by punches. Yep. Another well deserved fight of the night bonus. I mean, of the night bonus. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, and submission of the night. We didn't talk about this fight, but uh, Tony Ferguson, after that long layoff, after he broke his arm from a kick, yep. he won by Darce Choke at 151 in round one. You know, and that was, a, that was a gimme fight for Ferguson, too. You know, real, you know, he's on the show with us. He's got no boxing, no stand-up at all. He's a straight wrestler, and, you know, he's a great wrestler. You know, Mike Rue is probably one of the top best wrestlers in the world. You know, in college and coming up, you know, at his weight. You know, Mike Rule's a beast. I wrestled that kid. He's very strong, very good at controlling. But guess what? You know what he's going to do. He's just shooting for a double. And Ferguson sprawled and got that darts to get them long arms. Yep, and in that fight as well, another record was made. <laughs> Ferguson became the 12th fighter in UFC history to submit his opponent by darts choke. And his victory over Mike Rio last night at 152 of round one was the quickest submission of its kind in UFC history. Huh. Good job, Tony. Yeah. Okay, overall, how would you rate that event, man? I, I would rate that one clearly a nine. Yeah, I agree. I put it at a nine, too. You know, there's other great fight cards, but, you know, that, that fight card was very entertaining, and, you know... It... Okay, and one more thing I wanted to bring up with you, buddy. Yeah, no problem. Alan Fox. Man. She lost. Got TKO'd. She, she lost? By who? Uh, hang on, I'll bring that up. Was it another dude? <laughs> uh, no, she lost to... I bet she's like, man, why'd I get my dick cut off, man? I could be 125 in the UFC. Her, she lost to Ashley Evans-Smith. Good job, Ashley Evans-Smith. Yeah, um, her, she only has two professional MMA bouts, uh, but she had, I believe, she had a, a, a whole series of fights. I, I don't recall what the record was, but uh, she wasn't doing too well as of late, just before she became pro. Oh, here it is. Uh, she had 
five wins and four losses, and those four losses in her amateur record were from February 11th, 2011 on. So since wow. 2011, she's only won one fight before she turned pro. And the wow. last fight that she lost as an amateur was against Veronica Rothlin Hausler. I wonder if there was a, uh online betting with that, that odds in that fight. Yeah. And she took a dive. Yeah, and then uh, one of the girls that she lost to, her first loss was to uh, Tori Adams. And uh, her first professional MMA bout, she fought Tori again, and she won that fight by decision. Huh. And then she fought Fallon Fox next, and she she won by TKO uh, at 4.15 in the third round. Man, I just, I just hate talking about Fallon Fox, man, how they... Got the doctors in talking about, oh, she doesn't use testosterone no more. She's on this medication, blah, blah, blah. The like, stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that. I mean, you know, and, and a lot of people, you know, give you shit for saying that. But, you know, hey, man, it is what it is, you know? It is. She it's was a man much. who became a woman who still has the bone structure of a man. Exactly. And the testosterone levels. I mean, just because... You take medications, you slow your testosterone down, but you still produce testosterone, and, you know. And and w here's the thing. Do they even do any kind of testosterone testing for the women at all? Like, oh. you know what I'm saying? Like, levels. Is their levels the same as men? Is the yeah. same increase? Yeah, I'm not even sure about that, but uh, but we do know that uh, Cyborg was busted for steroids. Right, right. But, I mean, I, you got to find out the levels. You know, if the levels are the same as men, which it shouldn't be because women don't produce anything like that, you know, right. so... Who knows? You know, I don't know how they're doing that and everything, but you know, found Fox shouldn't even be allowed to fight an MMA event against another woman because, to me, that's that's a battery charge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you might want to hear that bit of news. I wasn't sure if you were aware of that or not because I know you jokingly said in the interview that we did back in April that you wanted to fight her. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll beat the shit off that girl or that guy. The it. Let's call it the it. I'll, I'll punch her right in her impact and explode that shit. Okay, Chris, man, thanks for joining me today. Um, is there anything that you want to promote, anything you want to say, to, uh, anybody you want to shout out to? Yeah, man, you know, so, hey, so I just want to thank all my fans and my family for support. You know, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, thank you for CarX, uh, Bandrick Computers, Wemo, Essential Business Systems, you know, uh, Stillwater Massage out of Colorado, thank you, too. You know, um, pretty much, you know, it's all my fans, man. You know, I wouldn't be here with them for you guys. And, you know, thanks for having me on the show, man. I'd love to do this again with you. Uh, yeah, man, I appreciate it. I always have a good time, man, uh, and you're a great guy, and uh, I hope to get you back again. Maybe uh, next time when we get together, we can have a few more guys join us. Oh, sure, man. Tell, tell what's the name I'll give him his cupcake. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah I'll mention gets, that to Daly. I got I to send that shit to freaking, where's that? He's in Europe? Uh, he's in London. Uh, not London. He's over in, uh, I think it's Manchester. Oh, my God, man. I'm going to, like, overnight that bitch. Yeah, that will be, like, a, probably a $50 cupcake. Oh shit, I might as well put an extra present in that box for him too. <laughs> <laughs> Especially a cupcake. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, wrap it up and say goodbye. Uh, it was great having you again, buddy, and uh, I guess we'll see you next time when we have the time. Hey, for sure, you too, bud. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for Alrighty, man. Till next time, my friend. Alright, take care, brother. You too. Peace. Bye bye.